everybody, I'm Jana from One Pip Wonder and today I'm going to be reviewing Project L Solo Mode. Here we go. So if you haven't um, seen my review for Project L, I would recommend you ch check that out. I'll, I'll link it up here and down below and that way you can get a really good idea of what this game is like and how it plays. As far as solo mode, um, what you're doing is you're playing basically an opponent or an AI type of player. You start with 15 white pieces and 10 black pieces. Then they'll be stacked white on top of the black. Um, so the first uh, arrangement that you will have will be all white pieces and you're going to place one yellow piece, two yellow pieces, and then one yellow piece at the top of those columns. And then you're also going to be giving your opponent a certain number of yellow pieces. Um, depending on the difficulty, if you give them six, that's the easiest level. If you don't give them any, that's the super duper hardest level. And as you play, um, you will be doing your actions like you would normally when you're playing Project L. But in solo mode, when you choose to select a puzzle from the grid, uh, whatever column you take your puzzle from, you're going to remove one of the yellow pieces that's above the, the row that you took your puzzle from and give it to the opponent. Now, when it's the opponent's turn, if there are any columns that don't have a yellow piece uh, above it, that means that that column is unlocked. And that means that they can take the highest scoring point puzzle from that column and put it into their victory point pile. I know, <laughs> that's really intense. They just get it automatically. But if you have a yellow puzzle piece above the column, then it's locked and they can't take anything. If you like take a turn and you choose not to take a puzzle, then that's gonna lock out the opponent. But then the rules say you have to take one yellow puzzle piece from each column and take it out of the game. It goes back into the resource pile. You will eventually dwindle away all the yellow locks until <laughs> there's none left to keep the opponent from taking puzzle pieces. It, once the last piece is placed out onto the table that triggers end game, you do get one more round to play and you also get the finishing touches phase. But any puzzles that are in front of you that are incomplete counts as points against you in solo mode. Now when I first learned how to play solo mode, it was how I was introduced to Project L to begin with. I, I was new to the game, I was trying to teach myself to play so I could teach others how to play. And it was so hard, I was like, man this game is tough, I don't, I, maybe it's not a very good game. I started playing with other people and I loved it. You'll see in the review, it's an absolutely outstanding game and it's so much fun and we've taken it on vacation, we've taken it to numerous board game nights and everyone's really enjoyed it. I decided after playing it for a while with other people to try solo mode again and I really struggled. I played it at least seven times and I never won. And in fact, I was losing incredibly badly. Um, the AI would get like 25 points and I would get five sometimes because I would end up with puzzles not finished. And it was just so frustrating. I actually got in touch with Michael, who is um, one of the designers behind Project L. And I said, I'm having trouble. <laughs> I'm having trouble. This game is really hard. Do you have any advice? And guess what? He really came through. <laughs> he wrote to me all his tips, his personal tips for playing the game, not as a designer or a publisher, but as his personal enjoyment level that he gets out of Project L and what he does. The thing that I was frustrated with was that the more I tried to beat back the opponent, um, the quicker I would lose. And that was extremely frustrating. I was like, there's no way to win this. I just don't think that it, it plays very well. <laughs> I think it's just way too hard. <laughs> but I was wrong. There's definitely a way to win. Uh, and what Michael had suggested to me was to allow the AI to take the puzzles at the beginning of the game. And this was like a duh moment for me. What I had been doing was keeping the AI from taking puzzles from the very start. Like just, just keep them back. Don't let them take any puzzles. 
but you can't do that the whole game because you only have so many of those locks to work with. And as I said, if, if you purposely lock the opponent out from taking puzzle pieces, the locks go away permanently. And that becomes harder and harder to even do that action as the game progresses. But his logic made a lot more sense. If you allow the opponent to take the puzzles at the beginning, they will only be taking the white puzzle pieces. But as the black puzzle pieces start to come out, the ones that you get three, four, and five points for, you really want to guard off him, get or the opponent, her getting those high scoring points. So at that point, that's when you start using those locks and, and preventing them from drawing from time to time. And and what happens when you lock the opponent out, you actually get two turns while they're stuck with nothing. You can do two master actions during that time and you have a chance to really build up your engine and start accumulating some points while the, the AI is just stuck in its same mode. So you really have to take advantage of that at the right time. You also have to do a little bit of hate drafting. That just means taking the highest point cards just so that they won't get that five pointer. If you if you take the five pointer off the board, then maybe the next one you flip will only be a three pointer and that'll save you a little bit. So that really helped. And I also really started working on all my efficiency because Michael said that's his favorite part of the game. How can you get the most benefit from your actions? How can you do the most with the least amount? And I really love that idea. So I've been working harder at m doing the more with less. After I started taking some of his advice, I did much better. I actually was able to win <laughs> twice and I my overall score improved. Now I still find it very challenging and I don't always win, but just having that little bit of success and seeing improvement in my own ability to play against the AI has been very fun and it's something that makes me want to play it more and more. I have to be honest with you, I was actually very candid with Michael and I told him that I thought his game was broken. <laughs> he was so kind. He really took some time to, to write to me and explain why he enjoys the game solo and maybe some things that I can do to do better at the game. And it really helped. And I apologized. I felt so bad for being very critical. Like, oh, I can't win your game. It must be a bad one. <laughs> Anyway, um, I, I think that there's a lot of like criticism out there about Kickstarter games or games where they just tack on a solo mode. I know there are games out there where they have done that and the solo mode is actually bleh, not even worth trying. But that's not the case here. They actually did put a lot of effort into making a nice solo mode. So it's very enjoyable for those who don't have a whole lot of people, to, who don't have other people to play with. So. I really appreciate that they did that um, and I have learned my lesson instead of being judgmental like, oh, it's just too hard I can't win I will be more um, careful to research and and see if maybe it's me maybe it's not the game thank you so much for watching this review of Project L solo mode um, I would love to hear any feedback you have on playing solo games and Project L. So let me know in the comments. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.